right, for this we're going to be doing cervical range of motion testing. Um, for, I always, you want to make sure you have a pattern. And um, again, we're not going over all the subjective and all the treatment. We want to go over the skills of how to do it. So first, Logan, I want you to look down. Bring that chin to your chest. Sometimes people will just do it a little bit. I'll cue them to do it. Because remember, we can manually cue without overpressuring. I'm going to overpressure originally because this would be to clear it if I'm thinking it's not a neck issue and I want to go in there aggressively before if they're not having much neck pain. So I put one hand here, so I stabilize with this hand right near the CT junction, and then I put my forearm near their, on their spine there. And then I put one hand on the head, and then I also put my forearm on their head. So this is really important. You don't want to just come up here and, and just kind of move them about. I mean, what kind of mo his whole body moves. I want to make sure that any movement I get from the cervical spine. And then I'm bending it like this. I'm not pushing it. I'm bending it like that. And make sure to hold long enough to give them a chance to say whether it's, you know, to figure out what they're feeling. Okay, next one I'm going to have you look up, Logan. And I like to demonstrate it for them, so there's no question. I rarely do any overpressure here. But if I do, I make sure to, again, put my forearm on their back, and I put my hand on their head, but I have the, some of my forearm on their head as well. And then I'm not gonna, I'm just gonna provide just a little bit here. I mean, I'm providing like three ounces of pressure right here. It's mostly right here. This one's just so they feel a little more stable because I don't wanna be choking them off. I don't wanna be covering their face. It's just right there. Again, I rarely do that one. I want to see how the other ones are. A lot of people don't like that, even without issues. And I'm going to be getting into quadrant later. And so I'm not missing out on the opportunity to compress them. Next one, I'm going to have you side bend here. And so this one, I put one hand here. You know, but I don't want to just go in here and say, oh, how does that feel, Logan? Like, I'm getting really what I want to. It just doesn't look or feel like you know what you're doing. It feels like you're a novice. I put one hand here. Again, I cut my hand right here. And I'm going to bring just down like that. I'm not pushing them that way. I'm just kind of compressing. I'm trying to bend right at the neck there. Now let's go this way. And then I'll say, okay, now turn your head to the right. And then I come in here. I put one hand on the on basically a scapula, one hand on the head there, and I'm gonna turn. So I'm blocking, because if I just go like this, his whole body turns, I wanna block that. And I'm really watching where that nose goes. You wanna know where that nose is going to. Come over to the other side, again, right here. And then this is also where you watch for little things, you know, is he, maybe this time, rest for a second, you know, he's coming in like this. Are their eyes at the same level? Are they more extended? What's the difference in quality of motion? So now I have those. I also want to know how the cervical retraction is. So just go like this for me, Logan. And that one is going to be, I don't overpressure that one. I don't want to be pushing on their jaw. I don't find enough value in the overpressure to make it worth it. But I will have them, okay, now that you've done this, keep it like that and now look up. So now they get an extension on top of a retraction. Could overpressure that, but there's so much there already, I'm not gonna do that. Now I want you to look up. So this is how I guide the quadrant. I have them look up, now I want you to stay looking up and turn your head to the right there. And again, hand, elbow, bottom part of my forearm on his shoulder blade. And I'm gonna do this, and this one is just to guide. I want to be pressing down here. I don't want him to feel like I'm pulling a wrestling move on him, you know, and I'm just cranking him that way. I just want to go down. I'm watching his eyes. Is this similar position as the vertebral artery test? That's not why I'm doing it. It's not a validated test. We're not going to do that, but it could put pressure on the vertebral arteries. So I want to watch that. Remember this. If it does put, if we do see any nystagmus or anything, that's going to tell us something. 
and it's putting strain on the contralateral one. But mostly what I'm doing is clearing out this side of it. Just like that. And I'll often hold that one for 10 seconds. If everything's been going well, and I want to clear this out and say it's not a problem, I'm holding that for 10 seconds. And if they have symptoms anywhere, I can't clear it out. Now, it depends on how much, the, how significant their symptoms are, if there's more on one side versus another, and if that lines up with the side that some of their symptoms are on. You know, it may be more, and that's a clinical decision process that we're not going to fully go over. But if that has no pain, you're holding it for 10 seconds, you better, you're going to have a hard time convincing me that there's a cervical spine issue. You may still be able to do it, but it's going to be hard. Um, another few things is we're watching range of motion is watch the quality of it. What, for instance, when you look up, for, look up again, Logan, oftentimes if people want to avoid, if they're having symptoms here, they'll kind of do this. They'll come away from it a little bit and they'll turn towards it. So that way they don't compress that side. And they may not notice it. Sometimes it's a remnant of something that used to be there. But if they're having an issue over here and then they give you a little bit of one of those, and it's off to the side, that lines up. It's a, it's a common, it's an accordant sign in an appropriate area. So we want to watch the quality of it. If they're turning their head and it just looks different side to side, it's probably because they're getting motions from different parts of the vertebrae. Now you need to deduce it all right then and there, you know, just take note of it. As you get better, you know, you get experience and then to know, you know, you'll pick up patterns where in the spine that could be from, but you can go in with your hands and figure out where is it stiffer, where is it moving more. But watch the quality of it and make sure that whatever you see, they feel. So sometimes if they turn their head all the way to here, the next time they only turn their head to here, they say, which way is it harder to turn? And they'll tell me this one where they had like 20 more degrees. And so then I maybe say, what's harder about it? And they may say, well, I can go further. It just hurts more. Okay. They feel like I can go further this way. And I'm like, that's not what I'm seeing. So I'll come over here. Let's look at that again. Okay, so your nose is about right there. You know, I spend a minute there. And then over here, I do it again. I'm like, you know, it looks like to me it's not quite as far on this side. And if they're not picking up, sometimes they just immediately like, oh, actually, it's harder over here. If they don't, I want to say what I'm seeing. And maybe they change. I don't want to bias them. But if it's obviously different, you know, one side may just be more painful or maybe it's more difficult to get there. But we need to be on the same page of where the differences are. So that when we think we make a change, when we go test them and they're better, if they didn't notice the problem before, then they're not going to notice, they're not going to think that we did anything. So the key is to be detailed and use enough vigor according to the patient presentation.